The Gulf Stream could collapse completely in just six months and send the world into an ice age. How high is the danger and what is really going on with the Gulf Stream? We'll find out in this video, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'd be delighted to get a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. If this new study is right, then I hope you like it cold. A new study from the University of Copenhagen warns of the possible collapse of the ocean current system that provides us all with comfortable temperatures. The new study, conducted by climate researchers Peter Detlevsen and mathematician Suzanne Ditlevsen, was published in the journal Nature Communications. They claim that the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC for short, could collapse as early as 2025. Oh, oh, but I can hear some of you asking confusedly, Atlantic Meridional what? I thought it was about the Gulf Stream. There's always a lot of confusion about these terms, so let's break it down. The Gulf Stream is a warm ocean current in the North Atlantic that runs from the Gulf of Mexico to the Northeast and is actually far away from Europe and South America. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, on the other hand, is a much larger current system to which the Gulf Stream belongs. The AMOC includes both near-surface and deeper ocean currents in the Atlantic and plays a crucial role in the redistribution of heat across our entire planet. So the Gulf Stream is just one part of this complex current system, and one thing is super important. The Gulf Stream can't really come to a standstill as it is mainly driven by prevailing winds and so-called thermohaline processes. These winds, especially the westerly winds, ensure that warm water is transported from the Gulf of Mexico into the North Atlantic. This warm water then rises in higher latitudes, cools down, and sinks into the depths, which leads to the formation of part of the Gulf Stream. These prevailing winds are in turn caused by the Earth's rotation, so as long as it doesn't stop, the Gulf Stream is relatively safe. And if the Earth's rotation were to stop, we would have completely different problems. The AMOC is a much more complex system of ocean currents that includes both near-surface and deeper currents. Although the Gulf Stream is driven by the prevailing winds, the strength and stability of the AMOC as a whole can be influenced by other factors. These include changes in the temperature and salinity of the water. This is where the new study from Denmark comes in. The researchers rely on extensive data analyses of North Atlantic surface temperatures from 1870 to 2020. And they argue that this provides a fingerprint for the strength of the AMOC circulation. Their analysis leads to the conclusion that the AMOC is highly likely to collapse as early as 2025 or by the end of the 21st century at the latest. Either way, this is a period that many of us could live to see. I would be 108 years old in 2099, I can manage that. Although maybe not, because the chances of me still receiving a pension here in Germany are probably about zero. And the two researchers themselves were surprised by their findings. Professor Ditlifson says, I don't think I'm very alarmist. In some ways, it's not fruitful. My result annoys me because the window of opportunity for a potential collapse is so close and so significant that we need to act now. So what do we have to prepare for? The last time the AMOC changed mode during the recent ice age, the climate near Greenland rose by up to 15 degrees within 10 years. If the AMOC were to fail now, global temperatures could fall by up to 5 degrees Celsius over the same period, and a 5 degree drop in average temperature is quite a lot when you consider that large parts of Europe, for example, especially the British Isles and Scandinavia, are only as habitable as they are because of these warm currents. That would be the end of it. On the other hand, reducing average global temperatures is always a political goal, so it's good after all. But let's dial down the panic mode a little. There is also a lot of criticism of the new study. Direct data on the strength of the AMOC has only been collected since 2004. In order to analyze changes in the current over longer periods of time, the researchers used surface temperature measurements of the subpolar gyre between the years 1870 and 2020. And no offense to our 19th century ancestors' great guys, but the data collection wasn't quite as accurate back then. That's why critics say that the data quality is not consistent over such a long period of time and is simply not suitable for accurately assessing the strength of the AMOC. Professor Dr. Nicholas Bors from TU Munich and the Potsdam Institute for Climate Research said, however, very simplifying assumptions are made regarding the mechanistic description of the meridional overturning circulation in the Atlantic itself. 
It is a simple saddle node bifurcation, which certainly does not account for the complexity of the AMOC. Saddle node bifurcation is a fantastic word for Scrabble and means a change in which a dynamic system, such as the AMOC, undergoes a transition from a stable equilibrium state to an unstable system when one parameter, in this case the C temperature, changes slowly, which can then lead to a sudden change in the behavior of the entire system. Put simply, the criticism is that the Danish researchers took too few parameters to be able to accurately predict the change in such a complex system. In addition, the spatial source of the data is far too small. This is because the researchers only took the surface temperature from the area of the subpolar gyre for this period, a tiny part of the AMOC, which may not be representative of the entire system. So we have old uncertain data from too small an area about a gigantic system that is almost impossible to calculate in its complexity anyway. I therefore agree with the criticism of this study and would at least say that the specific annual figures for the collapse, i.e. between 2025 and 2099, should be treated with great caution. However, it is undisputed that the AMOC is fundamentally influenced by the release of fresh water through melting glaciers, and we should therefore definitely continue to keep an eye on this. I would be very interested in your opinion. What do you think of this study? And can such complex processes really be reliably predicted? I'm really looking forward to the discussion we'll have. So it remains unclear whether temperatures in Europe will rise or fall, but what is certain is that my subscriber numbers continue to rise. And I know from the YouTube statistics that over half of the viewers of the videos don't even follow the channel. It's absolutely free, it helps me immensely, and you won't miss any more galactic videos. So I would be delighted if you would support my work and press the subscribe button now and act the bell. Many, many thanks, friends. Another thing that can really mess up the climate are super volcanoes. And under southern Italy near Naples, the Phlegraean fields are stirring. Naples has been hit by earthquakes for weeks, and the volcanologists are super worried. Everything about the current development, how high the danger of an eruption is, and spectacular original footage can be found in the video shown here. And if we want to support my work, please visit the Astro shop and get the great plush planets. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.